Hi, everyone. Welcome today's, to today's session. We are doing a Learn About, which is a new series by Metronet, where we teach you a specific tool or trick or something or a website, something that we think that our attendees would like to learn. And today we're going to be talking about Google Drive. My name is Olivia Morris, and I am going to be your presenter today. And as I said, I work for Metronet, which is the Twin Cities multi-county multi-type. And we hope that you enjoy today's presentation and that you will come back for more. This is the second in our new Learn About series. The first one was Google Docs, which we did about a month ago. And I have a link to that at the end of today's presentation. So if you missed it, you can go ahead and watch the recording. So thank you for taking the time to be here today. I'm going to be walking you through some things about Google Drive. I set this one up as a basic. So if you've never used Google Drive before, or if you're a Google Drive beginner, that is sort of what I've geared this toward. And that was done primarily because there is not a lot of advanced Google Drive knowledge. I think it's just kind of uh, a pretty easy tool for people to learn. So we're gonna cover some of the basics and maybe a few tips and tricks that you might not already know. If you do have questions, go ahead at any time typing those into the chat and Q&A or Q&A, not both. You can do either or. And I will not be watching that while I'm presenting, but at the end, I will go back and make sure I hit all of the questions. So feel free to type them in at any time so you don't forget. And I promise I will get to them at, and at the end. I will leave plenty of time for that. So again, thanks for attending today and let's dive into Google Drive. Okay, so we're gonna begin talking about what is Google Drive? That's the, the simple way to start. And Google Drive is an integrated storage file sharing um, product. So it is created by Google. It is used to store files and folders in an online environment, okay? So it's similar to Microsoft's OneDrive or Dropbox, which are other well-known file storage options. So if you use one of those uh, and you wanna switch over to Google Drive, this would be a great place to start. We will show you how Google Drive works today, but I also have linked here on the PowerPoint, or excuse me, on the slides presentation, um, a, a document about switching accounts. So Google's support documents are really fantastic. They're very easy to use and I think pretty user-friendly. So I did link a few of those in there and we will talk about them, but I just wanted you to see that you have the option of taking a look at this information. Um, I'm going to show you a link to the slide presentation at the end. You'll be able to access the slide deck and get all of these links. But this is all about how to use Google Drive. And they have these great specific links. Like if you used OneDrive, how do you trans transition from OneDrive to Google Drive? So they're there and available for you. And I wanted to make sure and call attention to that because I think that's really useful if you're coming at it from a certain perspective. Um, also, there is a, a getting started cheat sheet, which is linked on here. Um, same thing. It's just some basics that you need to know. And I'm going to cover pretty much all of that today, but it's there if you want to take a look or if you forget some of the things that I said down the road. And I just saw someone pop up and say they're not getting any sound. Can someone else tell me in the chat? Can you hear me? Okay, so it seems like the bulk of you can hear me. So it may just be that one person is having trouble with getting sound. So hopefully Rio will be able to work that out at home to get some sound. I wanna go ahead and keep going. Thanks everybody for helping out there. So the next thing I wanna talk about is storage. So Google Drive, gives free accounts. So anyone with a free Google account, a Gmail account, gets a Google Drive, they can use it for free, and you have 15 gigabytes of storage. That is actually, I think, the largest of any of these storage uh, products that they start with. And what's really nice about this is that they only count um, non-Google documents in that storage. So let me show you I'm gonna transition between the slide deck and then my actual Google Drive because I wanna show you what it looks like and how to navigate these things. So you are looking at my Metronet 
Google Drive that I actually use for working. You can see the documents that I'm using up there. Um, but on the left-hand side here, you'll see storage. And it does say that I've used 3.6 gigs of 30. I have 30 because Metronet pays for a premium account. So we, don't, we aren't using the free account, which is why it doesn't reflect that 15. But in the free, it would say how much you've used of your 15. And then where it says storage, you can actually click on that. And it will bring up a list of every item in your drive that is using storage. So it's showing you how much space each of these items are taking up. And you will notice at looking at these, these are not Google. This is a PowerPoint slide right here. If I were to transfer this into a Google slide, then this would stop taking up space for me. So as long as it's a Google product, it is not taking up space and counting against your storage. I think the 15 gigs is, is a lot of storage regardless. Uh, most of this stuff does not take up very much space, but good to know that if you are having some storage issues, there are ways you can fix it by transferring things over. And I will touch on how to do that later in our presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. All right, so we've covered kind of some of the basics of what is it and where you can find more help and about storage. And now I wanna give you a tour of Drive. I just wanna walk you through what it looks like and some of the basic things that we are looking at on the screen. So for starters, in the upper left-hand corner, you see the Drive logo and then the word Drive. This is actually a home button. So at any time you can click on this and it will take you back to your main screen. So right there, I was in the storage screen. And apparently we're moving a little sluggish today or else I didn't click hard enough, one of the two, hard to say. But now it has gone ahead and refreshed my screen back to the main page. So this is the home page for anyone's Google Drive. It contains on the left-hand side of your screen, the Drive menu. And then in the center of your screen, these are your files and folders. The top has your search button, and then the top right is your Google accounts. Okay, so we covered your home button, upper left, and I'm going to go across from there. This is the search bar right here. It's pretty clearly marked search in Drive, so it shouldn't be confusing. Advanced search, I will be spending more time on that later. I'm just showing you where things are. This little icon here, this little check mark with the underline, this is your offline mode, which I will also be talking about in a little, little bit. But if you wanna to switch to using these not web-based and while you're not connected to the internet, that is possible through Google Drive and you do that right there. This is help. If you need more help, you can click this to find more assistance through the Google pages. Here's your settings, the little gear icon. This is Google Apps. So just to click on that, you can navigate to other other Google products through that button. And then as I said, your Google account. If you have more than one Google account, like a personal and a professional, as you can see, I have several Google accounts. You can add them all in here and then you can easily switch between them. So right now I am operating through my Olivia at Metronet uh, drive, but if I wanted to see my personal drive, I could simply click on that and it would switch to that new drive same with the other drives that I have access to. So it's kind of one-stop shopping. You don't have to access them through opening up a new drive every time and signing in. You can simply sign in once to all of them and then just switch between them very easily. So that is a nice feature that Google offers. All right, so that's the, the top row, what we have in there. Going down a level, again, we're back in the left. You see this big button here that says new with a plus sign on it. This gains you access to everything Google that you would wanna create. This is your creation tool. So in Drive, you can use it to create a new folder. You can upload a file from your desktop or from pretty much any other location um, or a folder, a file or a folder can be uploaded. Uh, and then you can create a new doc, sheet, slide. You can read them all, you don't need me to read them to you. And then clicking on more shows you all of the things that people don't use quite as regularly, but are still options for you in searching and using Google products. And then I see this is in the way, so I'm gonna pop this up top real quick and show you that again. And then down at the bottom, we have the option to connect more apps and they're offering you that. Um, I do have some that are added on here that are not standard. So if you're following along at home and you have this pulled up and you're like, oh, mine doesn't look exactly like hers. Maybe you don't have merge Google documents. 
So that is something that I have added. So Google has the, the Google store where you can go in and, and use an extension or an app to add in that will do something that Google Drive maybe doesn't do. And in this case, it does not merge its documents very well, but there are apps for that. And as you can see, I have one. So I could navigate directly to that if that's what I am looking for. So again, if it doesn't look exactly the same, that is why I have customized this to be my personal, for my personal use. My professional use would be more accurate. Um, going down from the add button, the create button there that says new, this is the drive menu along the left. So they, this should look the same for pretty much everyone's account. It starts with priority and you can mark a document or a folder as priority. If you do not, they will show recent or heavily used items in your priority file. So these are not necessarily marked as priority documents. Um, and then down below this under priority, you will see workspaces, which is the ability to, if you use certain documents for a certain thing, for instance, I do some of the accounting for Metronet. And when I am doing the accounting, I'm going to the same documents and the same folders over and over and over again. So I created this accounting workspace and I was able to save the documents that I use most. So rather than navigating through and trying to find it here or there and jumping all around in my drive, they're not all in a one-stop shop. It just makes, when I sit down to do the accounting, it makes it a lot easier for me to function, to navigate through the drive by simply keeping them all in that, that singular workspace. So that is something that you can do and it's very easy. You simply create a workspace, give it a name, and then you can add files or folders to it as you upload or you can navigate to them. And I will show you that shortly, how you can move them into a workspace. Um, it's very simple to do. And then, like I said, it, it gives you the ability to just work in one area without having to navigate through different folders or file trees. So that is priority. Right below that, this is my drive. Now the my drive, clicking on that at any time, that is the same as clicking home. This takes you to your home screen. It is your My Drive. So again, if I had clicked the Home button here or if I click My Drive, it, it navigates me to the same place. You can also click this arrow here to show you a submenu. This submenu is all of the folders that you have created in your drive. These folders are also right here in my main drive. But if I'm looking to navigate a little more quickly through my, I can do it here. And then if I want to see what is in the Millie file, I can click that there and it will open. It will open. I feel like I need to say Sesame after that because it did not open that file. I don't know why that one is being fussy. There we go. We'll open the next one down because Millie is apparently not going to function for me today. So in the MLA Digital Preservation Task Force, I can open that and see the, the subfolders that we have in there. And then of course I can open any of these to see further subcategories. So you can navigate through there. If the folders, the folder icon has a little person silhouette on it, that means that has been shared with at least one other person that is not you, the creator of the folder or the document. So anything that has people added to it, for sharing, that is why you get the folder with the little person on it. And we will cover sharing as well. So that is what that looks like. And you can leave that minimized or you can leave it open however you prefer to navigate. Again, that is the same as your file menu right here. You will see those same files, but without that quick access to the subfolders. So from here, I would have to actually open these, which one did I open for? Digital preservation. So here I have to click on it, open, and then I see the subfolders, and then I'd have to click on to open. So it's just a, a little bit of an extra step to do it this way. It's easier access if you open it through the My Drive area. And then just going to bring us back to home real quick. So again, that is my drive. Below that we have shared drives and you may or may not have access to any shared drives that will depend on, you know, whether it's personal or professional and, and if anyone shared a drive with you. I do happen to have a shared drive. So I'm going to click that to open it up and you can see that there's a shared drive in here and it has its own name. So someone else created this ProPay123 Instructors, which is a course that I uh, um, am enrolled in and they shared that with me. So it is linked in my drive so I can access it through there. Instead of having to open a new drive, I can get to it through my existing 
drive. And I can, of course, see any submenus through here as well and access it. And I can, of course, click on that at any time and take me into that drive if that's what I want to see. Below shared drives is shared with me. This is access to anything that someone has added you to. So if they create their own document or folder and they then share you, they add you to it um, and they share it with you, you will then see that in here. So you will notice these are all shown as shared because at least you are added to them, if not other people as well. And so that's how you can find those. Below that is recent. So quite literally, this is the most recent documents that have been opened in your drive. So if you, if you just want quick access to something, you know you were just in it yesterday and it's the first time you've opened it today, you can just jump to reset and see that document there, saving yourself a lot of steps to find something. Starred, if you have a particular document that you wanna mark as of note, or if it's something you know you're gonna go back to quite a bit, or for whatever reason that you might wanna star something or draw attention to it, you can do that. I will show you how to do that momentarily. And those appear there in your starred. And then below that is trash. This is not where you delete something. This is where you find items that have been deleted. So if you delete something from your drive, they stay in here for 30 days before they are permanently deleted from your Google account. So you have the ability to find something if you accidentally delete it. And then I already showed you the storage function and what is housed in there. So that is the drive menu over on the left. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that home button one more time. Take us back to the main screen. And you are seeing again, the drive menu on the left. Here are my folders. Below the folders, these are files that are not filed in a folder. So any fold files that I've created or files that have been shared with me that I don't have stored in a particular folder, those are linked down below. And then up here at the very top, these are suggested items. And suggested here on this page is items that are used very frequently. So here it says, was edited today. This is something I shared today. So I took action on these items. And this is something I edited in the past week. So there's only these two today. And then this was the most recent one after that. So that's why those three are showing on my suggested items. Um, this is something that we can turn off if you don't like it. If you would rather just see your files and folders, you can certainly do that. I will show you how to do that, um, but I want to finish my tour real quickly. So up here where it says my drive, if you click on that little arrow, you will again see another menu. This is a creation stop. It is the same as the new button. So it does it here or here. And depending on the view on your screen, sometimes people make it so that they don't aren't seeing this left-hand menu. So that's why you have the access to it here if you just wanna view through your folders and files. Uh, going across this bar, you see this. This is the ability to how you view your files. Right now they are done in a grid. So you will see these are my folders here done in a grid. And I can click that at any time and change that to a list view if you prefer. You get a little more information in the list view not only does it give you the name of that folder, it also tells you who owns that folder and the last time it was modified. And then if necessary, if they're negligible files, if they're so small, they don't really measure them. But if they're larger, they do tell you the size of the files. And in the grid view, which I do like, I think it is a, a for, for my money, it's a neater view of things, but you do not get all of that extra information. So whichever works best for you. And then we see, you see where it says folders. To the right of that, it says name. You can select how you want them sorted. Name, modified, last open. So if you want, if you're going back to the same things over and over again, you might want to do last open and then it keeps them right up front for you. Whatever works best for you. And then how do you want them sorted? So sort or reverse sort are your options there. So me, I'm doing alphabetical. So it's A to Z or Z to A. And what did I miss? Oh, I missed the little I. This is the detail button right here. This is next to where the list view or grid view is. So on view details, I'm gonna go ahead and click that so you can see. And if I select a folder, so this Metronet folder, this is a private file. It is locked, it is not shared. I own it. And then you can see, you know, when was it open? When was it created? 
any information about the folder itself. If I've shared it with someone, it will say that. So let's look at this Millie one. So it tells me I own it and I have shared it with Ann Walker Smalley who has editing privileges on that folder. You can also see activity on these folders. So anything that has been done to them historically, you can see who's created, who's edited, who's changed permissions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It gives you an overview of that information. So it's very a very useful tool if you need to find out more information about a document or a folder that is in the Google Drive. Let's get that out of the way again. All right, so that is our tour of Drive. And now we're gonna take a look at some navigation tools. So this is kind of, the, the heart of Google Drive. This is the things that you're gonna use on a regular basis when you are working through Google Drive. So we're gonna start with search. I touched on the search earlier, this bar up here, and it has three main components. One is the magnifying glass icon, which denotes that it is a search. So if you couldn't see the words on there, this it tells you search. It is also the button that you would click to search if you're using a mouse and not a keyboard. On a keyboard, you can hit enter. Um, and yes, it is before you type the search terms, not after. I found that strange too. You can also just click this and do a blank search if there's no, nothing to search for, which Google just basically pulls up the most recent things that you've looked at there. So it's kind of a what's new, what's my most recent items here. Um, and then on the right hand side, this is the advanced search options. So before we get to that, I want to show you if you search and drive, I'm going to click in the box without typing something. Come on, there we go. So when you click in the box, it brings up this immediate sub menu. And I say immediate with a little bit of tongue in cheek there since that took a little longer than it should. And what it shows you then below that are your, th your three most recent searches. So these are the three things that I most recently searched for in my drive. Below that are the commonly, the commonly accessed people. So yourself and anyone else who has access to items in your drive that are used most commonly. So if you're in a large organization and there are hundreds or thousands of people, um, the ones that you use the most frequently will appear in this area. So the, the biggest users, I guess. Um, below that are the different file types that you can search for. So if what you are looking for is a presentation, a slide deck, and you cannot remember the name of it, but you know it was on slides, you can just come in here without putting search terms in and just click presentations. And this will sort all of the presentations that are in your Google Drive. So you will notice immediately we have Google Drive slides as well as PowerPoint presentations. So it does not have to be specific, it just has to be any presentation slides that are in your um, drive. And we have a lot, we, we do a lot of presentations at Metronet, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in there, but. So you can use these search options just as individual searches. So if I want something that was created by me, which is foolish in my very own drive since almost everything in my drive was created by me, but I can do that. Uh, it's just a, a, an easy way to find information. And then there's a link to the advanced search. This in the blue and this right here, these are the exact same thing. Okay, so we'll take a look at that real quick. So if there's... Again, this does pretty much what that search does when you just click in it with a few additional. So there are more forms that you can search here than are offered on that quick, that quick search there. You can search by owners. So it does give you the option to switch to search by a specific person. If you know someone sent you a, a document that you cannot remember the name of, you can search by that person's name where it's located in the drive. If again, if you work for a large corporation and you were in a huge massive drive, sometimes you just have no idea where something is filed, but you know it's under financial documents. You can at least narrow it by that and limit your search somewhat. By date, by the name, um, if you know the word education is in that file, but you don't know what it's called, you can search by just that word and see anything that has education in the file um, and anyone that it was shared to. And then again, this is in the way. Uh, and then there's the search button and then a reset button if you want to start over because you got all the way through the form and then realize, oh, I forgot one part that I can make it even better, which happens to me quite frequently. So that is how you can do an advanced search in there. I do think the advanced search is very useful. However, I don't think it is much more useful than this quick search by putting the cursor in the drive search bar and letting this sub menu come up. 
I found that this usually does it. And then again, you can search for, I'm gonna search for the word school just for fun. You can simply just type in a word and then it'll give you all the results in your drive. And that's file names that's in within the document. So it's reading all of your documents and it's finding that word. So you will get quite a lot of results, especially if you like me work in education and use the word school as your demo. Um, also, when I typed the word school, I, I hit enter a little too fast, but when I do that, you will see that it's immediately bringing up what it thinks are the most relevant results to that term, that the term that I used, and then showing me the last access for that right there. So I used this one on November 2nd, so earlier this week. Um, that one's pretty old, but it will show you that, that information. So and if this is the one you're looking for, or this is the one you're looking for, you can select it through here to go into your drive and access that document. Or you can, like I did, hit the enter button and see all of the results and not just the most relevant ones. And it's still loading because there will be a lot of documents with the word school in them in mine. The X clears that search out and lets you start from scratch if you wanna just keep looking. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate back to home. All right, so that was search, the uh, options and the advanced search there. I also wanna show you the menus and in menus, both shortcuts and color. So I'm gonna just touch on those, those three items here in navigation. So here is my Google Drive, which is loading pretty slowly, but from the main page here, I discussed the drive menu, which is over here on the left. Now I wanna show you the, the folder menu or the file menu, which are the same but I'm gonna to navigate to a file and I'm gonna go ahead and use Ali as my example. And on that file, I'm gonna go ahead and right click. It's like performance anxiety. I don't think I'm actually clicking hard enough. And when I do that, you get this menu here. Boy, this little share screen is kind of irritating. It always seems to be in my way. When I did my docs presentation, someone sent me a note afterward and said, just so you know, that little, this little toolbar up here was in the way when you were showing some things. So now I'm very conscious of that. And it seems like, I wish I knew a way I wouldn't, that you could like not have it on the screen. If anyone knows that you could let me know that, but I'm just gonna keep bouncing it out of my way as needed. So again, right-clicking on, on any one of my folders brings up this menu. Now on here, you have access to just about anything that you could possibly need with this folder. The open with gives you the ability to open it with any of the apps that you've used. So if you add an app to your Google Drive, um, they will show in here. So if it if it can interact with what you are trying, what you are looking at, it gives you that option there. Here is the share button. This is a very important one. This is probably the best used. I will be covering it shortly. I just wanted to show you one way to access it. Also, you'll notice that I have this file highlighted right now. Here it is over here. As soon as I highlighted it, 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 it gave me the option over there. So I didn't actually need to right click, just a single click on that folder without opening it, give me the, action, the option to share as well. Um, get the link. If you wanna share the entire folder with someone, you can get the link. Where is the folder located within my drive? Add shortcuts. That was one of the things that I wanted to discuss with you. So adding shortcuts is really useful if you have a pretty big, uh, menu. So I have several folders and all of them contain subfolders and then sub subfolders and some sub sub subfolders and so on and so forth, all with different files within. And I use a lot of them for different things. And I told you earlier that I use the workspace. I go ahead and put things in a workspace in order to be able to access them more quickly. Um, but I also use shortcuts. So creating a shortcut, and I actually I'm gonna show you here in my drive over here on the left. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and you will see this folder right here that says Morris timesheets. So for my job, I have to fill out a timesheet twice a month. So I'm going to this a lot. I created a uh, timesheet folder. So this was buried several levels down in my tree, uh, my menu here, but I wanted to be able to access it quickly. So I created a shortcut and put it here on this main screen. And then I color-coded it so that it stuck out a little bit, even though I do the, know the name of it, but um, 
it's it's probably my most used folder. So I wanted to make sure that I had quick access to it, that I could access it easily, and that I drew attention to it with a color. I have another shared one right above here. This is the 23 Things Project. And this is not one that I created. This was created and shared with me. And there are a lot of people with access to this. So I have the shortcut there. So again, I can access it easily. And I, again, made it uh, a color because I just wanted it to stand out a little more from the rest of my files. So for any folder, if you want to change, again, using that right click, when you get this menu, you will see it gives you the option to change the color. And it's just easy. If this is the Ollie is the one that I'm on. If I want Ollie to be brown, boom, Ollie is now brown, just like that. There was no rhyme or reason to that. Usually I have a pretty good rhyme or reason for why I make a particular folder a certain color. Um, for instance, under Metronet, the financial folder is green so that it sticks out for me because that is one that I use quite frequently as well. So um, that one I did not shortcut. You might have wondered about that. And the reason that I did not shortcut that one is just because it, it contains some more sensitive information than say my timesheet information. I mean, if you all wanted to look and see how many hours I work, that's fine with me, that won't bother it. But the financial one does have some more sensitive information. So I do keep that one buried a little bit and I have to work to find it, but that's why I color code it. So it jumps out at me a little bit, but I do not shortcut it. So shortcuts again, add the shortcut and then the change the color. You can also move. So if you find you want to move a folder around, it's not in the right place, it should be a subfolder, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I think sometimes when we create these things, we don't have a, a plan in place or things come along that we didn't expect. It happens. We all find ourselves in the position of having to move. You can do that through here. Here's where you star them. I talked about that earlier. If you have something that you want to make of note, you can go ahead and start right there. You can rename them at any time. You can search within just this folder. View the details, I showed you that earlier. There's that same eye in a circle and it's also right here on the top right of the screen. You can download this folder or you can trash it. So it gives you these options and those options remain the same throughout all of your folders. So it doesn't really matter which one I do. If I go to a file, so this right here, this is a file, a, do a Word document, rather than an actual folder within my drive, you will notice, um, I have a couple different options because this is not a folder, this is a file. Now I have the option to preview. So if I just wanna take a quick glance at this without actually opening it up, but I wanted to see what it was because the name maybe didn't mean anything. And I will say that's a pretty terrible file name there. I did not name this. Um, and it is not at all descriptive of what's in there. So that would be helpful to see what that is before opening it. Uh, the open with remains the same, share, get link. Here's where you can add to workspace. And just to mention that real quick, that was not present when I was doing folders. So you can't add an entire folder to your workspace. The workspace is meant for individual documents. The workspace it kind of becomes a folder, I suppose, as a way that you can look at that. So jumping back over here to the files. So here's where you can add to a workspace. So you can create your, a workspace from here, or if you have an existing workspace, I could add this document to one of these places that I work on a regular basis. I'm not going to because I do not want this document in this workspace, but that is how you do that. Where is the file located? That's the same as in folders. Shortcut is the same, move to, starred. This one is new, available offline. So you can make it so that this particular document can be accessed offline. So that means I could work and edit and create within this document while not connected to the internet. So that is uh, good if you know that you're gonna be someplace where your internet might be sketchy and you've gotta do some work, go in and just click those files and make them available offline so that you can use that information um, whenever you need it. I don't need that one to be available. That's why I turned it off. Rename, details, make a copy is different. So I can copy this entire file exactly. So it'll change it and it will rename it copy of and then this same file name, which then you can go in and rename to whatever you want it to be if you need to have more than one of these and then download and trash as well. So fairly similar menus between the folders and the files, but there are a few additional that the files have simply by the way that files work. So I see somebody just popped up. Can I show again? Can you show again how to access docs when offline? Yes, I can, absolutely. So for an individual um, document, so this, this file right here, 76 Morris, I right-clicked to get this menu. 
And when you do that, there is a button here that says available offline. If I click that, turn it on, it then makes one file available offline. It says that right here in the lower left corner, okay? If I then right click again, you now see it's blue. That means it is available to work offline. So it gives you the ability, like I said, if you are not connected to the internet, you can still work within this document, make changes and save, and all of that will be, be collected. And once you connect back to the internet, it will sync it all back up with the information. So everything will be exactly as if you had worked online. So it's a really nice feature that they offer. So that is the quick navigation through files and folders using the menu that you access through the right click, which is again, different than that drive menu on the left of your screen. We talked about how to make a shortcut and how to use, a, use colors to help you navigate and how to change those colors. So we are off to settings. So in the settings, the settings are actually very simple and straightforward for Google Drive. It pretty much does what it does and there's not a lot to tweak here, which I like um, as opposed to like say my iPhone where I feel like every time they update it, I spend like a day reading documents on how to make it work properly and then have to spend a lot of time tweaking things in the settings so my phone does what I want it to do. This isn't like that, it's a lot simpler. So the settings, there are three main things that, that the settings does that I wanna draw your attention to. One is converting uploads. So I mentioned earlier when I first started the presentation, um, in your 15 gigabytes of free storage, that only counts things that are non-native documents. So not a Google Doc, not a Google Slide. If it's a PowerPoint or if it's a Word document, those will count against your storage. If you wanna prevent that, you can actually in, your, in the settings, and I'll show you in just one second, um, set it so that anything that you upload that's not native will automatically be converted into a Google format. So I'm not sure how that would work for you, if that would work and if it wouldn't. Um, I, I have mixed feelings on it. Let me show you what that looks like. So again, in the settings, that's that gear along the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, hit the word settings instead of keyboard shortcuts. And it's right here, right in the, it's kind of smacking in your face when you open it convert uploaded files to Google Docs editor format. So if you check it, it will convert your file. So if I were to upload somebody's PowerPoint presentation, it would automatically transfer it into a Google slide present format for me. Um, again, mixed feelings because while they do a really good job, there's some formatting issues that, that do arise. So if you need something to look a certain way, I wouldn't keep this checked. If you just wanna be able to view it and not have it count against your storage, go ahead and check this and you shouldn't have any troubles. But if it's something that you're gonna be using, um, if, if everyone's sending you PowerPoint and they're always gonna be transferred to slides, um, that's helpful. But occasionally you run it into formatting issues that might not be useful. So you should know how to check and uncheck as needed. Uh, also in there, going back to here, enable offline. We talked about that earlier in order to have that option in the menu that I was just showing, you need to have this checked. Create, open, and edit your recent Google Docs, Sheets, and Slide Files on this device while offline. So you have to check this first so that it gives you the option to do it on an individual file that I showed you earlier. Okay, so make sure you have that, do that. And again, it allows you to do your, your work anywhere with your Google Drive with any of your files. And then the last thing is the suggestions. So the suggestions, and here we are in the way again, down here at the bottom, there are two suggestions. Um, let me just cover this third one here. Make priority my default homepage. Some people prefer that since I showed you the priority shows you the most recent documents. And if you're constantly, that's how you're navigating. If that's the way you navigate, you can actually make that your homepage. So when you click home, instead of going to my drive, it goes to priority. So done. Instead of this being your home, the My Drive, this page, the Priority tab would then be your home. So if that's how, and if you were to use workspaces more frequently, et cetera, um, you could use this as your home page. It does give you that option to share in there. That doesn't particularly work for me, but again, your mileage may vary. So if you wanna do it, you should know how to do it. Um, and then above that are the two suggested files. The first is showing suggested files in my drive. 
and the other is suggested files and shared with me. That one requires you to refresh the page and I'm gonna show you both. So right now I have no suggested files in shared with me. So I'm gonna click on shared with me. And there is just the files and folders in there. If I navigate to the settings, and then I go down and select that. And then again, it said page refresh. So I'll go ahead and refresh this page real quick for you. And now you see suggestions, which is recent documents or folders that have been shared with me. I don't find this as useful in shared with me for various reasons. Again, that's my perspective on it. You may find that you like that, so you can go ahead and turn that on there. Uh, it's not my thing. On the other hand, the show suggested files in my drive and shared drives, which I do have checked, I find that to be very useful. I'm gonna navigate back to my drive. And right here, it says suggested, and below that are, once it finishes loading, the most recent documents that I have interacted with. So I edited today this presentation that I am showing you. Uh, I opened this file earlier because I wanted to see what was in it before I used it as my demo in this presentation. And then notes that I was making on this presentation, things that I wouldn't forget to tell you about. So, and I shared that with someone today. So these I interacted with today, they're the most recent documents. So I tend to use these rather than navigating through. If I'm working in a document and I'm not just creating it once and done, I'm gonna be creating it over a period of time. Like for instance, this learn about slide deck. I've been working on it for a few weeks and it's pretty much always been up here in my suggested because I continue to work on it. And that makes it easier to find rather than having to navigate to where it is housed, which is pretty deeply down underneath this Metronet one. So that's why I like this up here. But if you don't, if it's not your thing, not really sure why that settings, I am offline. That's weird because I'm not. Come on, Google, don't let me down. There we go. So I'm gonna navigate to settings, show you this one more time. And here I'm going to uncheck show suggested files, hit done. And they're immediately gone. No page refresh required. And now there are no suggestions up there just the files and folders. So again, it's it's a little flexibility in the view and what you can see here. It's whatever works best for you. You can try it both ways since you can see it's pretty easy to navigate. Um, and that's really all in the settings that I think needs to be covered. I will just very briefly dash in here and show you. I don't think there's anything else that I, well, since I'm in, I'm going to turn that back on because I do like that one. Um, maybe in manage apps might be worth drawing attention to. This is a list of all of the apps that I have added in here that have been connected to my drive. And then I have the ability to turn them on that they automatically run with that. So this annotation document, if I'm going to be annotating something or I want to turn it into a PDF, then I would like it to run through annotate with Cami. So I have that collect selected to use by default. There are some options here, pretty much just how to get rid of it if you don't want it. So I don't use these a ton. I pretty much connect them, turn them on, and then leave it alone. But if you do need to work within the apps that you have added, that's how you do it. So it's settings, and then on the left, hitting manage apps. All right. Uh, next, we're going to talk about collaborate and share. So collaborate and share is probably the biggest bulk of things that you were going to do. Everything else is just sort of how do you move around within your drive. But once you have a drive, you need to know how to use the items that were in. And that's under collaborate and share. So I'm going to spend a little time on this. Uh, again, I've linked a, a support page. If you want more information and more help, you can look that. You can look at that um, from any particular folder or document, doesn't make any difference. You can, again, right click and you can share. Or, getting rid of that, simply single click on a file or folder and then it appears right here. You can get that link to share that folder. You can find out how to share it right here. You can trash it 
And then there are more actions, which are the same as that right click. So the right click would be one step shorter, but the share I find is very helpful. So if I wanted to share this Millie folder with additional people, I can click on that and it will bring up the share options. So it's showing me that there are two people that have it right now, me, and I own it. It says so right there. Ann Walker Smalley, who is the director of Metronet, my boss, has editing privileges on here. I can change this. I can make her just a viewer so she can see this folder but not interact with it. I can make her a commenter where she could share her thoughts but she's not allowed to make any changes or leave her as an editor where she can um, actually change, add, edit, delete. You can give temporary access. So if you just want someone to be able to see it for a little while until a page goes, until something goes live or whatever, you can do that. And then you can also transfer ownership. So I created it, but if I want Anne to own this, or if I want to send it to someone else, you have the option of doing that. And of course, deleting the file as well. So there are a few options there. You can add in here. So you can type in by name or email address someone in your Google address list and share it with them. You can also, down here where it says get link, you can change who has access to the entire folder. So right now it, we have it restricted to just Anne and myself. I could switch that to anyone within the Metronet organization, which is Anne, myself, and one other person. So we're pretty close to that already. I also have the options of changing it to anyone who has this link. I'm not going to do that because I do not want this file, to, this folder to be public, but you do have that option. You can make them so anyone can access them. So, and again, you can also change who, what your permissions are and then what they can do, what their role is once they have access to this document. And you can do that for any folder and any file in your Google Drive. And those can be changed at any time. It is not locked in, it is not permanent. It's very easy to do, and that is one of the more common things, but also one of the more important aspects of Google Drive is the ability to share that information. Once you have done so, once you have shared or used it, you can, at any time, I have still selected this Millie file, you can click View Details. Again, you see who has access, but you can also see what has happened. So what has been changed, what has I think it's all, all been me and mostly views on this, but oh, here was something that, that was changed by someone, not me. So you can see that, that through the activity very quickly. It just gives you the ability to see what people are doing with the file, which can be useful in a lot of situations. Um, so that's the share button, the activity on a file folder. And then the last thing is shared with me which I touched on a little bit earlier, the shared with me, but again, showing you all of the things that I have not created were shared with me and I am going to change this view. Remember I told you, you get more information in the list view than the grid view. So I'm gonna change this over to the list view because now I see not only the title of what was shared, but I can see who shared it with me. So it's telling me the original owner of this document and who it was shared with me and when it was shared with me when I received access to this particular um, document or folder. So it's helpful to know that in the sharing, to see that. And if you, for instance, wanted to share with someone, so the 23 Things Project I don't own. So I click share and it says right up the top, you are a content manager and cannot share this folder. I don't have the ability to share this with anyone. I have the ability to interact with it because that's all the permissions that I was given, but I do not have the ability to share it with someone else. However, I can ask for permission to share this with someone. If I want to share it with someone, I can add them in here and it will send that request to the manager or the owner of this document and ask them, Olivia Morris would like to share this with so-and-so, and then they can make that decision. So just Information that you need to know that is helpful, I think, when you're trying to share this and navigate it. Mostly, I think they do a good job at making it as simple and as straightforward as possible. Who do you want to share it with and what kind of access do they have is all you're really looking for. So that is the collaborate and share. And that brings us to the end of all of the things that I needed you to know about uh, Google Drive.
Um, I'm going to navigate back here and hit home just for a second in case someone has questions, which I will be looking at in just a second. Before I get to that, I just want to point out I have two more of these scheduled. Uh, Google Sheets is coming up on December 6th. They will, they're always at this time, four o'clock. And Mondays is the day that I've picked for Learnabouts. Um, and then Google Slides is coming up on January 10th. So those are the ones that are coming up. The registration for those are available through um, our website, which is metrolibraries.net. And also in, they will be uh, advertised in Metro Briefs, which is our weekly newsletter. If you are not already subscribed, you can do that on our website as well. It's fabulous, I promise you. It's a great newsletter, it's totally worthwhile. And I have the link right there. Oh, I went one too far, sorry about that. I'm trying to get this silly thing out of my way again and back. So if you missed the previous learn about, there's no, this is only the second. So the first one was Google Docs. You can see it there. Um, and then in the future, that will just be a link to our YouTube channel where you'll be able to see all of our learn about recordings. And I will take questions now. And also on here is my email address. If you have follow-up or if you don't think of a question until after we sign off, which happens frequently, feel free to email me. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. There's also a link to this presentation. So bit.ly slash learn about drive, all one word, learn about drive. Um, does anyone have any questions? I'm gonna jump over here to the Zoom page real quick and take a look at the chat. Can you show again? I talked about that one. Does all of this work better in Chrome or doesn't it matter which browser you use? Um, that's a really good question, Sheila, and I think, Chrome is a Google browser, so I think everything is optimized to work in Chrome. However, it still works just fine in whatever browser you're using. I don't think that there's a notable, noticeable difference between them, so I've certainly used this in not Chrome. And you can get the Chrome browser on any PC. I'm using a Chrome book right now when I'm showing you, um, so that's why I have the quick links down here to all of the Google products at the bottom of my screen. But I do think that, that the Google products work well anywhere. I also use them from my phone, which as you know, is an Apple product, because I mentioned that earlier. Um, and it works great in there. And I actually think for some of them, like uh, Google uh, Sheets, which is the spreadsheet function, I think works better in the uh, iPhone app than it does on the, on the screen. So that's just my opinion. But we'll talk about that next month when I do the Google Sheets. Let's see, lots of I can hear yous. Miranda likes the color folder ideas. Great, I agree, Miranda, those are terrific. And where can I get links, get the link to this learn about? So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the chat. So that is bit.ly slash learn about drive. There you go, Jean. That is the link to this, this slide and you will see all the information and then have access to all of the live links. I'm seeing the Q&A has a question. Janice says, so the search feature searches the file names and not the content. Did I understand that correctly? Answer live. So Janice, let me jump back over here to my drive real quick and cover that one. So uh, when you search in drive, if I type in a word or a term, it is searching the file names as well as the content. You can change that. So if you're searching a person's name, it's looking for file names. It's looking for owners who owns it. It's looking for people who are shared on it. It's looking for people mentioned in a document. If you use just a keyword or term, it searches everything. It's a pretty exhaustive search that they are doing. You can, however, in the advanced options, search for if you want to just know the, the name of the file, you want to find something that is, has the word education in the name of the file, you can do that through the advanced search. Otherwise, just a generic search in Drive, that's going to search everything, the document, everything. It's going to search everything. That's the easiest way to say that. All right. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you all so much for attending today. 
As I said, we have a few more coming up in the future. I hope that you will take the time to attend. I hope that you learned something today, found it useful. I will be sending out a follow-up email um, where I will include the slide deck and also an evaluation for the event. So I hope you'll take a moment to fill that out. But that's all I've got. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much, everybody.